Republican co-chairman, leading some Trump supporters to suggest this is proof that the system is rigged. Jason Miller is the Trump campaign senior communications advisor. He's with me now. Jason, good to see you. Thank you. Good evening. So is it true that you guys wanted to sit the four women in the Trump's family box? Uh, well, absolutely. Uh, and we should have been allowed to, but uh, um, that was yesterday, and now we're on to uh, the rest of the campaign. Do you feel like you were treated unfairly, given that Mark Cuban was allowed to sit in the front row for Hillary at the last debate? Look, there have been a lot of issues with this debate commission, from the, the Mike incident, uh, the first debate, uh, to the, uh, the incident last night. Um, but uh, despite all of that, and despite the, uh, the pile on the three-on-one we had with the two moderators uh, against Mr. Trump, so ultimately it became a three-on-one during the debate, uh, I thought he still did really well and won the debate. Do you, there was some rumbling about Trump demanding that Frank Farenkopf be removed from the commission, not have anything further to do with these debates. Is that a position you guys are taking? Uh, I don't know if anything formal uh, has been said yet, uh, but we're clearly not happy with uh, some of the way things have been run so far. But he's going to be in Vegas. Trump's showing up at that debate in Vegas. Uh, I'm confident Trump will be there. Okay. You have to ask with Trump. You never know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're ready to go. I mean, oh. look, especially as well as he did in the first debate, as great as he did last night. I mean, uh, going into this third debate, uh, Chris Wallace, we talk talking foreign policy, mm -hmm. the opportunity to prosecute the case on Benghazi and go through the Russian reset, uh, all of these absolute foreign policy di policy disasters that Hillary has, mm -hmm. uh, this will be a great opportunity for Mr. Trump. One of the things that Trump was saying just there was we're going to make sure this election is not stolen. What, why does he think there's a risk? What does that mean? Well, I think what he's talking to is the fact that we have to make sure we turn out our people. We have to make sure we have voter integrity at the polls. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, the reporting is fair and it's accurate, and we're making sure that we're getting the information to all of our people, not being fed false information. Uh, and we have to uh, turn out and vote. I mean, that's ultimately what it's all about. What do, you, what do you make of the latest polls that show Trump behind 11 points behind Hillary Clinton in a, in a, in a four-person race and 14 points behind her in a two-person race? I, I love the fact that uh, NBC seems to now be getting into the business of uh, breaking the news and then also having the polls magically pop up. No, we all do. We all we all both report the news and have polling operations. Right, it's not unusual. Right, but this uh, this poll is an outlier. Uh, you look at the LA Times poll, which has us ahead by several points. There are a number of other. The Gravis poll from just a couple. But this days. is the one that was done entirely after the sex tape, the Access Hollywood tape broke. Uh, yeah, but it was before last night's debate. And what we've seen for any of the tracking polls that we've seen, like the LA Times uh, and others that we've been looking at, is the fact that this has been holding pretty consistent. I think actually Mr. Trump will probably get a pretty nice bump uh, after last night's debate. I mean, it's a big win for him. Uh, we felt very good. I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but uh, we thought uh, Hillary looked pretty rattled uh, coming out of the debate. Uh, and so we're pretty excited about the next one, too. What do you make, uh, earlier Trump said today that um, if, if, more tapes come out, like the one we saw, the Access Hollywood thing, Billy Bush. If more tapes come out, he says he's going to attack the Clintons uh, on women. He's, he, can, he will continue to attack Bill and Hillary Clinton. Why would that be when, if you take the Access Hollywood tape, that was an NBC News release. It wasn't, the Clinton camp didn't have anything to do with that one. Well, I think there are a couple of things here, taking a step back for a moment. Uh, number one, uh, with our, on our side, we were calling out the hypocrisy of Hillary Clinton and her campaign uh, with the constant low road. We played the clip beforehand of one will take the low road, we'll take the high road. Mm -hmm. Their campaign has been taking the low road this entire campaign. and so She had a lot of choice words for him last night, too. She wasn't entirely up there, as she would have us believe. Yeah, this was not. And on the high road. Yeah, this wasn't exactly a pillow fight. The road had a little, it had some trips down, it had some trips back up. It was there mostly low. Uh, but look, we're going to call it hypocrisy when we see it. We're not going to be shy about it. We're going to stand up. We're going to defend ourselves. And uh, we're ready to fight back. What, let's talk about those these four women specifically. Because there's a, the one woman, three of the women accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault. Um, allegations that were never proven in a court of law. And then one woman, Kathy Shelton, was herself a rape victim, not a Bill Clinton, a, a rape victim when she was 12, by some man, and Hillary Clinton was his court-appointed legal defender. And the, man, the case was plea-bargained. He got off with time served. It was only a couple of months. Um, then she was heard on tape laughing about the, about the case and some, some aspects.